Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. The PU Monthly Report was released this week, and it is full of new progress, so let us delve into it. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members, in particular to Ranger59. Thank you all so much for the support, it is truly appreciated. So kicking off with the AI Features team, they spent time working on the experience and responsiveness of some of the behaviours in the PU. For example, combat perception reactions were improved, and they also managed to make the queuing of reaction animations when characters are using a usable more robust. The team also tweaked friendly fire to avoid unwanted damage and fixed the calculation used by the NPCs to prevent them from shooting when friendly characters are in the way. That would be very helpful, although it doesn't stop me accidentally shooting them in the back, but for myself it's more important that they don't shoot me in the back. On the vendor side, responsiveness was improved and the team fixed bugs related to the scooching animation, which is basically crouching. I will say I'm hoping that one of these days soon we will get more of a refined crouch mechanic where we can scale the speed like we can when we're just walking or running normally. As crouching is a bit of a one hit wonder where you have one speed, the animation isn't all that great anyway. So it will be nice to get more of an improvement on that one, especially when stealth starts becoming a thing. Now for AI tech, they continued their work on planetary navigation generation, with the team saying the key elements for this month were about implementing an automatic way for requesting generation on the area surrounding the player, but we also worked on allowing the usage of the funneling algorithm to be used on the planetary navigation mesh triangles. The team also extended the code for navigation links to allow for the creation of customization controllers, which is a generic piece of code that will extend how NPCs evaluate whether they can use a particular navigation link, like doors to tell the AI whether they are locked so they can be correctly used when pathfinding. So it does sound like some more great progress is being made on this navigation mesh. I think the new 316 card for NPC passenger missions will be using this, but only for space stations to begin with, which is quite a big step in itself. Having an NPC actually make it to an elevator, get out of the elevator, or go in the elevator, get out of the elevator, get into your ship, and then get out of the ship and get back into the space station. It's a small step, but it is definitely a big step at the same time. Now, for the ship AI, they concentrated on improving targeting and accuracy, improving the way that AI use missiles in combat and introduced ways to allow missile logic to force or request prioritization of a specific target. The animation team made plans to improve the drunk locomotion set, which will help solve technical questions for the heavily injured set as well. So I assume this is referring maybe to replacing the current prone animations when players get a severe leg injury, as at the moment you just go prone. So creating more of a proper locomotion animation instead, where you are very immobile, but still capable of maybe pulling yourself along, perhaps. Anyway, work also continued on facial animations for all existing body animations, while progress was made on emotes and lines for various characters throughout the PU. For the character art team, they made updates to the DNA archetype heads. This will be used to improve the quality of all character heads in the PU and Squadron 42. And they also began developing a suite of new frontier style outfits for Pyro's population. Man, I can't wait to get through to Pyro. So moving on to the ship art team, they cleaned up bugs and continued to polish various areas of the Ares, including several new paints. The Drake Vulture reached final art with focus on habitation and the cargo hold. Very happy to hear that. Uh, another new ship received its final tints and had bugs fixed throughout. And in the UK, three ships moved through the final stages of the pipeline. So it does sound like there will be three straight to flyable or drivable vehicles, like maybe the Anvil Spartan, the Misk Odyssey, or a refiner. And the Argo Raft would be my guess. Finally, the Banu Merchantman progressed through White Box and the upcoming Misk Hull series continued development with the Hull A preparing for White Box review and the Hull C approaching Grey Box review. So great to hear the progress on all those ships. Although I did think that um, I must be confused with the Hull C in some sense because I thought it was going through its gold standard pass. So I'm hoping it's just an oversight that I've not picked up on and it'll still be coming with... 316. I suppose it's potentially could be a 316x patch in that case, but let's just hope that it doesn't get pushed back. So moving on to the weapon art team, they began working on the Firestorm Kinetics size 3 bomb for the Hercules 
and artwork for the upcoming ship tractor beam asset as well. Now we did actually see a clip, or not a clip, but a, an image of this tractor beam and it has been spoken about a few times. So it does sound like this is coming to fruition sometime soon, maybe with one of these new ships for interacting with cargo. If I was to take a bit of a speculative guess, I think CIG are intending to get the cargo refactor released by the end of the year. I mean, it would make sense if the whole sea is coming because that was something it was relying on. But that could also open up the option for ships to be able to pick up, say, the prospector saddlebags or the mole saddlebags and move them around. So a ship tractor beam with the cargo refactor for the end of the year does make perfect sense. So let us hope that that is the plan. But I think if the whole sea gets pushed, it's a potential that the cargo refactor won't be ready. But we will see. Anyway, also, they concluded the mining gadgets, proximity mine and laser trip mines. And we got to see these mining gadgets in a bit more detail on Inside Star Citizen last week. Now, for the audio team, they prepared for the final stage of Claudius Audio Software Development, which is what we heard about at CitizenCon. And this should really help to clean up all the audio issues that we are currently seeing anywhere, as it makes it much easier to iterate and bug fix on everything to do with audio. Uh, also, the audio team worked closely with composer Pedro Camacho on the score for Pyro to establish the tone and sonic palette. I like that word, sonic palette. I'm going to use that more often, I think. But I'm very excited to hear what Pedro can come up for with Pyro. Currently, we just know of Stanton with all the different scores that he has for the different locations there. Something like Pyro. Ooh, I can only imagine. Now, for the gameplay features team, they focused on the new item kiosk that will add the ability to sell items back to shops, with it being converted to building blocks in the process. They also finalized technical design documents and began work on the major cargo refactor and worked on the upcoming IAE event. And I will say again, I really hope that this cargo refactor comes in for 316. It was one of the features or the many features that was holding the whole sea back from releasing. So with the whole sea on the schedule to release at 316, this is why I'm expecting maybe not the full cargo refactor, but at least snippets of it or parts of it. I'm not sure if the cargo refactor can roll out in stages, but it will be a great new addition for physicalizing cargo and everything that that entails. So fingers crossed it's on track. Next, we have the vehicle features team who are focused on a significant rework of Gravlev handling. It says a breakthrough in implementation meant that they could make significant improvements to the handling, making it more dynamic and flexible. So this could be why the improvements were suddenly added to the release viewer for 316. Although I don't know much about this breakthrough, I'm very happy that it was found and made and we can get these updates in 316. I do want that Star Wars speeder feel. Now, Jump Point development continued with the team currently cleaning up loose ends regarding gameplay logic. For example, when multiple people will jump at once. Now, some of the low level tech behind Jump Points have dependencies on server meshing, so the team continued to work with the relevant teams. Improvements were also looked into for the transit system, which is quite complete, but was also built before server meshing and streaming. So there are upgrades to be made so that it copes with the new tech landscape of the game. Now, the lighting team finalized lighting for the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, plus tackling the backlog of legacy tasks and polish locations across the whole PU. A look dev pass begun on Pyro's abandoned space stations as well, which I am very excited to step foot in one day. I think these abandoned space stations are going to be quite ominous, scary, but still full of opportunities and things to do. Now, moving on to the locations team, the Montreal based team put the final touches on Area 18's hospital, which is set to release in 316. Other hospitals progressed as well, with Maria Pure of Heart in Lawville, the rest stop clinics, and also Levski's hospital. Great to hear they're making progress on Nyx. Hopefully, it won't be too much longer once Pyro's released that we get to see Nyx. Uh, the derelict ships progressed as well, with the team scattering parts of the caterpillar around planetside locations and they also added puzzles inside them. With currently two types of modules, we have the vanilla ones, which are simple spaceship parts that we can find basic resources or items, and then the puzzle modules, which contain a puzzle with a lootable container as a reward. The team have now completed these and are assembling them at various crash sites around Stanton. Again, these are also coming in 316. Some of them will have AI, some of them will have traversable puzzles as well as other types of puzzles. Hopefully these wrecks are also a place where they can use the navigation mesh. 
allowing the AI to patrol around the or walk around the outside of a spaceship as currently the AI in Starfarers are stuck inside, they can't leave. And with the derelict caterpillar being very different to the Starfarer with a lot less interior space, it would make sense that the NPCs are not just locked inside that ship. But we will see when the time comes in 316. Now the narrative team continued to work on content for Pyro, including missions and developing the factions and locations found throughout the system. For the systemic services team, they wrapped up their ongoing work on the economy, tools and AI simulation, and they are now focusing on optimization for the remainder of the year. Hopefully this is a good sign and that shows that they managed to get the first steps of quantum done for the end of the year as Tony Zurevec was saying that they do want to get the first aspects of the quantum economy and the virtual AI, instantiated AI working and in. So I'm really hopeful we get to hear about more of that soon but also see it for 316. Now work progressed on intelligent NPC spawning and tracking with the latter half of the spawning system progressing well. The tracking system continues towards its first major internal milestone. So Tony Z and his team there making awesome progress. So moving on to the Turbulent team, it says Turbulent services progressed with the Hex tool, this time bringing it to parity with the previous version. They also continued to adjust the crash handling pipeline in prep for deployment next month alongside a new update to the Panic API to support the upcoming changes. The team also worked on feature requests for the Entity Graph for the Persistent Tech team. In UI, the team progressed with UI for the upcoming refueling feature and mining gadgets. They also spent time converting the ASOP terminals to use building blocks for a future release and worked on updating door controls for the latest ships. Really looking forward to refueling in 316. Another gameplay loop that is just going to create more multi-crew working together and also just pulling strangers together for refueling. Much like what Medical is doing right now where it's getting strangers together and randoms meeting each other. This will just add more to that. Now the vehicle tech team worked on various features for the upcoming patch including new vehicle release support, landing gear, radar and scanning, repair and door control panel interactions with the team saying the control panels are of particular note as we are aiming to soon expand such interactions to allow the player to control their environment in new and exciting ways whether they are within a vehicle or a station. So I think they are referring to the recently completed life support system which will likely bring the ability for us to control our oxygen and such on board of our ships and vehicles, but also as it says here on stations, which will be a very nice addition. Managing a system like that on our ships, I suppose could be the first step into the full component system and obviously life support is very important. The team then moved on to incorporate feedback on the radar and scanning improvements submitted last quarter. And from what I've tried in 3.15, I think the scanner for mining still needs a bit more refinement as it can be a bit painful when scanning a rock. Losing the UI even while you're in the middle of mining can be very frustrating. I will need to do a bit more testing though but at the moment from what I have tested it is quite frustrating. Finally we have visual effects. The team have completed the final pass on several new ships including the Ares variants and their weapons. Planetary ground storm effects were rebalanced which was necessary due to the recently improved visual effects lighting model. And finally, the team also had several visual effects focused play tests where they found and fixed lots of minor visual bugs. So great progress there. Glad to see these ground storms are getting a few updates and visual improvements. So that is the PU monthly report. Quite a chunky load of information there. There is a lot of work going on and a lot of it actually looks as though it's going to be for 316. So I'm sure over this next quarter, we will see more of what they spoke about here on Inside Star Citizen. I think next week's Inside Star Citizen is dedicated to refining. If I remember correctly, hopefully I didn't dream that, but a great report all the same. With that said, if you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. Also, if you want to come and hang out with me over at twitch.tv forward slash Super Mac Brothers Ryan, you are all more than welcome. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. It does the channel a big favor and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. You guys are incredible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.